You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. Oh, From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, this is AfterBuzz TV for Californication. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Californication news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues. Boom. Boom. See, that throws me <laughs> off. It just throws me off because Sir Richard Wentworth, our announcer, is sick, and so we had to piece that from last season, season four, that we did for Californication. Um, for the intro, but Sir Richard went with Fear Not. We'll be back in full force soon. Um, for those of you listening, you may remember me, Phil Svitek from last season. Um, and if you're watching, here I am. And uh, for, <laughs> why don't we go around the room? Because if you're watching on video, which you can at youtube.com slash afterbuzztv or on our brand new website too, afterbuzztv.com. Sorry, shameless plug. We just did shameless. Also another <laughs> shameless plug. And the site looks that good. It's worth talking about. That's all. It is. But an exciting season of of uh, Californication. I'm joined. Uh, why don't you, Spicy, take it away. I'm terrible. So in the building, you have myself, Spicy Mari. And it's perfectly <laughs> appropriate for a show like Californication. <laughs> right. And with me, we have a newcomer to the show, Californication, uh -huh. but also expert at everything, Ronnie Jr. Oh, okay. $25 <laughs> goes to you in a little bit. All right. Be in your account tomorrow. And we have a guest with us today. First ever with the AfterBuzz family. He came in as a guest. Um, we have Bam Erickson. Hey, what's up? AfterBuzz <laughs> fan, too. He's yes. been, he's been After supporting. Buzz fan. Yeah, Absolutely. and then once we got the new website, he was like, okay, cool, now I'm in. So there you go. <laughs> I see how you are. <laughs> he wanted to make sure we got the updates right and everything. Right. Do you yeah. watch the show all the time? Actually, I watch it periodically. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm a fan of TV, so I, this just, was a, I like TV, period. This was a dirty one. I mean, they're all dirty, or they're all crazy. Or it's, a, it's an interesting show, for sure. <laughs> and Phil? Hello there. guys, hello guys. <laughs> um, you know, it, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to have a fan like Spicy with me, and I'm glad to have sort of a different take from just a just an avid TV fan such as uh, Bam and Ronnie. Um, now, I just want to talk about this. Spicy knows that we come into the events three years after the um, after what happened, and that was kind of the build up. That was the, kind of the promos, and and we actually had a chance to talk with Evan Handler, who plays Runkle at the Emmys gift suite. Um, and you know that's how they built it up, and and, and uh, he gave us some insight then, which is coming true. And so I, I just really want to take the time to kind of talk about Hank in that three-year period. And I think for me, uh, we we kind of talked about this off camera, but uh, uh, the epitome is that relationship that he has in New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but apart from that, what what other things do you guys think happened? You're talking about in the distance? In the three years that they... Yeah, just in general. Warp speed ahead. Like, I didn't know that they were going to do that. I guess you had the yeah, inside scoop. But I was really surprised with that because I felt like that's a huge amount of time. And I, I see movies do it all the time seven years later. I didn't expect them to do that with Californication. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised that they fast-forwarded it so much. But, because um, I think they needed to... They, they probably thought in their mind they needed to progress the storyline. I'm not quite sure why they did that but we see um hank going from jfk or that's the name of the episode jfk to lax but we see him going from new york back to la yeah well it started off you see him in his new life i guess right. the new york life but you know what the way he talks i mean and i've seen some of the earlier uh, seasons or whatever he hasn't changed too much we're gonna talk about three years he's, he's still the same he's still person. the same guy we do see him with with this one particular woman and it does seem as if uh I, well they they end up having um a falling out or whatever at the restaurant at the restaurant yeah, the she show. she gets really loud and <laughs> talks about you know some some stuff and she walks out um but it does look like maybe he was serious with her we don't really know for sure for sure what what happened uh we later figure on that he was kind of serious but i think they like living up, together or she lived in the house yeah they opened um, up the first scene of this show i think giving us an example that hank hasn't changed one bit like you said yeah but that also he still has these dramatic relationships with these girls who whatever 
crazy reason, I don't know if he puts it on him or what he does in the bedroom, fall in love with him, knowing against their better judgment that they should not talk to someone like Hank Moody. Yeah, for, for the sake of the show, he sure does have game. I mean, he gets on. The, uh, he goes to JFK, he gets on the plane, and then we see his uh, encounter yeah. with uh, Megan Good, uh, the actress, <laughs> which caused you to <laughs> say what? Do that again? Shout out to Megan I Good. say, <laughs> Yeah, so. I mean, she's fine, you know. Um, well, real quick, I want to ask you this, because for me, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with uh, Charles Bukowski, the writer. It, Hank is sort of, for me, the modern age Charles Bukowski. And uh, as much as, you know, the whole big thing with him was, you know, I got to get to New York, L.A., and California sucks. And, you know, this whole thing, I don't think he really is New York. He's much more of the laid-back California tie-dye yeah. kind of so guy. I agree with you with that. He's not New York at yeah. all. Yeah, but I feel like that was... Why did they why did they even try to sell us that he was leaving? Did they decide at the last minute that they were going to write that out of the show and bring him back to LA? Well, uh sorry, I am not sure I understand. Like I, f I feel like they d I feel like he never really needed to go to New York. He could have had this yeah, no, blonde but relationship that, no, but that, here in LA. No, but that well then that keeps it kind of the same and it goes to what Phil was saying. You're in this zone where, like, I want. You said he wanted to leave. Like that was like his thing. He yeah, but he like left at the end of the season, and then like now he's back. I think that's good. That's good for the show. There are people that need to go and find themselves or, or make a change. I mean, I lately have that's been true. embracing the city that I grew up in, Southern California. But there was a, a big moment for me where I was like, I'm dying, and still to some degree, always want to go live in New York for a two, three year span just to have that. I mean, I did stay in Weehawken, New Jersey for a quick, you know, four months or whatever in years past. But I think that was good for the show. I actually thought, even though we didn't see New York at all. Mm -hmm. We saw it just a little <laughs> bit. We didn't necessarily see if he became a New Yorker. That's That wasn't even the point. The point was, it's like a, after some time you're like complaining or whatever, or he's, he, I don't want, he's, you said he didn't want to be in Los Angeles. He well, wanted the, to go. The, the problem was, um, you know, he, he grew, he didn't grow up in New York, but he grew up on the East Coast and uh, he, they started off their family and that's where him and Karen and Becca was bliss. Yeah. Over in New York and then Ka he really feels, uh, you know that that's where the pit comes from is that california rule and what he had with karen and that that's what this california story has been all about is him and karen and yeah. you know ironically it never gets old and but him going back in these three years he, he thought okay i can amend that i could i could regain what i used to have and no that's not the case problems You're, are still problems yeah 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 so totally agree so we see him get on the plane he hops on the plane yeah. back he's going to go visit his family and in the midst of that, like you said, he meets Megan Good. We don't even know if he was going to go back to New York or whatever, because he says, I'm going to come out there for a couple days. He's that coming was, to L.A. That was the original. Yeah, he was yeah, coming, he's com he's coming, he's coming back he, to L.A. And he puts on some uh, some insane moves on Megan Good. You know, we see the character. Um, she's wearing the tightest dress that ever can be worn <laughs> uh, physically, um, you know, just at all. He they flirts with her. inside jokes about like a pool and on her lab getting her wet like a pool. Yeah, like you said, getting her wet. Yeah, yeah. That, it did, that, that part did show up uh, on the show. And then... Um, they chain, exchange seats or whatever for a little bit, and then there is the potential mile high club situation that is about to go on, where she says, "Well, I'm going to go to the restroom, and I'm uh, not going to lock. I'm the not going to lock the door." <laughs> and as it's about to happen, you know, um, it doesn't happen because of the, uh, the interruption. So, somebody somebody does barge in on them, so we see him get to LAX. He's back home now. You you just feel the West Coast vibe the way it was shot. I thought it was kind of cool, and um, they their exchange is like, "Okay, we're gonna." talk and she's like no she just like kind of peaced out she's like i'm good but I you knew like that though yeah. well and you knew us watching you were like i guarantee they're gonna run into right. each other why you did know? you why did you like that i liked that she i like that there was still something left to the imagination and i think men oftentimes need that if you give them everything they want up front so if she would have given him his mile high fantasy um, he probably wouldn't have called her the next day. It would have just been a hookup. But well, now, but it's not to say she wasn't going to do it. She was ready. She, she was down. Yeah. But I like that they didn't. I like that something got in the way of their little moment of passion, mm -hmm. so that he could still be on her brain. You know, because obviously you could see. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, later on, you know, still wanting her and having that desire, because we see in the previews later on that he can't get her off his mind. Right. And you always want what you can't have. So now he's just, you know curious about that's the spicy tip of the day for sure <laughs> um and then he, he immediately goes and stays with uh uh i guess that's his like agent to some degree uh what's oh, runkle. Runkle. Runkle? runkle what i liked uh you know at, i forget who he says it to but um you know he's talking about runkle and writing the book as we see him in, in new york he wrote the book californication about all of this and he says i think it, it, it's actually with rizza 
um, who he's having a conversation with because he's hired to do this project, the movie. And he says, yeah, Runkle's always good for a laugh. Which he is. That's what Runkle is. He's just good mm -hmm. for he's a the, laugh. He's a riot. Relief. And he got his 100th bang uh, in this show today. Wasn't that like a big deal yeah, for him? He was... Yeah, he's been trying to get this for like a long time yeah, now. Yeah, a long time, yeah. But uh, one thing I like about Runkle is that he's not very attractive on the show. I'm sure in real life, <laughs> he maybe um, downs himself down for the show. But um, I was a huge fan of his on Sex and the City. And so now um, his character in Californication is completely different. So I love that I'm able to see his range right. and him, his being silly and just fun and him embracing like, okay, I'm not the most attractive person, but I'm just going to get just as much, you know, bedroom action as you um hank and he well, does not, that not just as much because hank's like bar <laughs> barely 100 i was like 17. Well, hank yeah. can like snap his fingers and get a girl but i love that runkle doesn't think that he can't like yeah. runkle doesn't think that it's impossible for him he still oh, has right. confidence you know there's everyone's doing it because his uh ex you know i guess when he's exchanging the kid Marcy. Yeah, she's over there, you know, taking care of business as well with the Marcy's another character that I am crazy about. She's another one that uh, whenever I see any women on television whose role they get to be sexually empowered, mm -hmm. I love and find fascinating because I feel like years ago it was unacceptable for women to even talk about sex. And now when you have a character on a show like this who is sexually empowered, they're running in the bedroom, they get it whenever they want from whoever they want, right. when they want. I mean, I just, I love it. I love that Marcy <laughs> really owns it. Here's an insider tip it's it, i don't know if she's exactly like that character sexually but um from meeting her in real life she is that nuts that oh. outgoing she is that eccentric again i don't know how she is there in the bedroom a little truth but that's a good exclusive right there I was gonna say, okay so you <laughs> know exclusive. the real her but you don't know how she is in the uh, bedroom okay all right all right i mean hey if if i have a chance to find out i'll let you guys know <laughs> i'll her, take it for the say, team spicy Muddy wants to know if you are the sex fiend that you play we're going to have to ask her that if we can get her on the show. We'll ask her. We will get her on the show. We hope she don't slap you in the face. <laughs> I don't think she will. She, I know. What she, if she's like a, He's you know, smooth. He's, he's got the, you know, he's he, he knows what to say. What if she's like a real prude, like, you know, quiet kind of, but you said she's pretty, she's pretty crazy. No, so. here's what she said to me. Darling, I will talk to you in one moment. I just need to get this drink in me. Oh, so. after Buzz exclusive. And to that, you can say, <laughs> what else would you like inside of you? I mean, oh. maybe. Oh. And I'm like the super PG guy, but I just said that. Oh. <laughs> Why? That was very X-rated. Now, okay. to, to my it defense, probably wasn't that bad. to my defense, uh, this is from only meeting her once, so who knows? Maybe that you know, it was a fun day for her. I don't know, but she's she, she's very fun. If nothing else, she's very fun. Darling, she said darling. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, I love cool. her character. Uh, made for an awkward scene though, a little bit because then the guy that was uh, you know giving her a little uh, attention, um, he ended up like hugging um, what's his name Hank. He ended up uh, hugging him while. Um, Taking a pill, not Viagra, but it was Niagara. <laughs> Niagara. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah. I was like, Niagara, hmm. I guess that one lasts, like, he said nine hours yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and he's, that. like, giving Hank, like, a hug, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a legitimate... It was just interesting. Tell well, me. that's the, the they all. I mean, Runkle, um, now Stu, who, which uh, by the way, Ronnie, f f since you don't know, um, Stu was kind of a major plot point last season, especially mm -hmm. with the uh, Marcy and Runkle um, scenario, and and uh -huh. so now he's a friend, and and it's just so. I want to ask you guys in LA, like, are people this friendly? Um, because th we know they're close acquaintances, but like spicy, like if 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 Ronnie walked in on you naked, banging your boy. Would you be like, yeah, what's up? What's up? We haven't seen you in a while. How, how personal is this getting? Okay. Wow. Ronnie, I pr I'm, I you can, hey, Bam, I'm going to include you in that I'm conversation. Like the oh. I was going to say, the they, yeah, you can't really break her I, down. I, I'm, probably, I'm probably comfortable being naked in front of anybody. And so I'm kind of probably like the wrong person to ask <laughs> just because I'm free. But um, I'm from San Diego. So I don't know if I would represent L.A. that well because I'm San Diego. We speak to everybody. We have everything to smile about. We're very friendly. But these people aren't from L.A. They're from the East Coast, remember? Yeah, but it doesn't mean there's not L.A. from the East Coast type people or from wherever. The, the L.A. thing is always interesting because there is no one who's actually from Los Angeles. Right, they're there's, actually here. When you say somebody from L.A. acts this way, 
I mean, the the people that are from here, I mean, yes, there's a handful that are also like within this Hollywood thing, but you know, there's a lot of like the outskirts or whatever. And I grew up in the South Bay, you know, it's just 40 minutes away, but it's, you know, you stare at Hollywood, but you definitely ain't Hollywood yeah. to any degree. And most but, people uh, who have that reputation for being LA, it's it's a it's a pattern that they got once they got here from being around other that's people. That's like a, and then all of a sudden they, they become to be right, and then all of a sudden they become LA. They it's not even Hollywood. a ge ge uh, geographical thing. It's like a what you become when you get into this. You would more say it's a Hollywood thing versus like the location, even right. though, even though Hollywood's a location. I definitely think you know what these shows. Of course, they live a fantasy to some degree, but I don't th I don't know. I I'm saying there's crazy enough people and not crazy. That's not crazy. It's sexually empowered, as you say. <laughs> which you <laughs> know you. some of the things she says, I'm like, wow. I guess you can be very sexually empowered as a person is crazy but um i think there's people not everybody but i think that stuff definitely could go on i'm not saying i'm not closing my mind yeah. to the fact that that I is anything is possible legit you know um, well let, let, let me ask you this i mean in terms of that embrace with him and Stu, you know uh there's a lot of notion of how much things have changed in these three years right and that embrace shows me that you know what maybe they haven't changed as much as we think even though in hank's mind this whole world is a uh, whatever chaos I don't know. Uh, what, what, like, especially, what, what's your guys' take, uh, especially with going on? Uh, we have Becca dating. You have Karen now with the new guy, um, which I believe he's he's from season two, right, Spicy? I don't remember this new guy. No, but right, I think he's from season two. When did she hook up with? No, last time she was with the black guy. Yeah, last time she was with the black guy, but now it's. So who is this new guy that came? The, the, I don't remember the, him at all. I, I think uh, I'm pretty sure it's season two where uh, Hank's writing the book or the biography about okay. the guy, right? The rocker. Oh, that's who she's with. I was trying to figure out this entire episode. Where have I seen him before? And when did he come into the scene? So so Karen got back with him from the past. Yes, it's it's past relationship. Okay, got it. Okay. But so just in terms so of general, confused. like, uh, you know, do, do you guys, and it's, it's a tough question to ask of Bam and Ronnie, but nonetheless, I do want to ask it, have things changed that much? You know, is this a different California from what Hank's used to? He didn't make it look like things were so out of whack. I just think he was adjusting. I don't think, you know, his his reactions weren't that everything was so different. But he, I think he expected to come back and it'd be exactly the same, you know? And and there was some life that had been, had moved on uh, with or without him, you know, and maybe maybe that'll get him, does he get, is he the type that gets pissed off about that? I mean, does he? I think he, I think it was more. He plays more, it so cool all the I think time. he was realizing like, nobody really needs me. It's not going to be as easy as I thought. Because Hank is the type of person who usually gets what he wants yeah. effortlessly. And he's not held accountable for any of his actions. And even early on in this episode, he did, once things got good with that girl again, he was talking about, oh, I'm, take me back to the airport. I'm, go I'm going back home. You, you, I mean, we did see that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, you know, so... Um, yeah, he probably saw it and was like, oh, they don't really need me. And and she was now willing, you know, she was like, oh, I'm at your house. Where are you at? And then she texted him again and again and again. And then it got it got lit Kinda up. Ugly. It got lit up. <laughs> yeah, completely. But I love when um, he gets back with Karen and uh, her new husband. Um, I can't remember his name. Phil, do you know his name? I don't. Okay. Well, Karen and her, her, her new husband. And she's constantly, like, kind of being snarky with um, Hank and saying, like, yeah, he's just like you. Mm -hmm. He's an asshole, except for he's awesome. Like, she's kind of throwing oh, it right. in Hank's face, knowing that Hank is still in love with her. But this is kind of her way of expressing a little bit, I think, of her resentment towards Hank. And this is Karen, right? This is Karen. Because Karen's always wanted to be with Hank at the end of the day. I don't care what people say. Yeah. We want them together. I just want to say, I think Karen, the way she looks, the way she talks, the way she acts, is exactly what Hank would have had the baby's mother. Like, that is exactly mm -hmm. who, he, I guess maybe they were married at some point. That, to me, was just like, the, it's the perfect, yeah, it's very believable. Did he ever give her her ring? He never gave Karen. They never officially married, did they? That's always his baby mama. Yeah. No, they never officially How married. How old's the daughter? The, the daughter the, that's getting around now. She's now in college, but we've only seen she's her as in a college. Yeah, young. they said she was in college now because it's fast forward three years later. But Younger, we've only seen her. We've only seen her at a, as a child. So this is yeah. the first time we've seen her supposedly as an adult. But she, wait, wait for, and sorry to cut you off. Oh, no, Interestingly ahead. enough, like uh, you know, in the past seasons, we've kind of seen a resemblance between Karen and Becca. Mm -hmm. And now I think, I mean, right? You see, uh, you see Karen's face in Becca like more so. Like something in the eyes. It's yeah, and, like and, and the face shape too. It's like I would say. It's like a pain say. behind the eyes, and I do see what you're saying about as far as the jaw structure. But um, but <laughs> wait, they, you're just talking about actresses that just happen <laughs> to look alike. But they really, to me, don't necessarily. I mean, the show's doing good. <laughs> it's fooling you like that. But they they haven't ever, to me, like resembled each other like 
dead on. Oh, okay. Um, but I do see what you're saying, and that could just be, I mean, they say when you spend enough time with someone, you start to look like them. Yeah. But um, I definitely see that Becca's growing up a little bit more, but her personality hasn't changed at all either. She's still the dry humor, attitude, smarky little child that we see when they're Is sitting. Is she resisting her dad more now, or...? Um... He's always been a huge disappointment to her. One thing okay. about Hank is that he's a disappointment to everybody. Um, there's a kind of a lot of characteristics between him and Frank from Shameless <laughs> that right. you'll see. It, that they are huge, um, you know, f ups, and so and everybody has to clean up their mess for them. And so um, Becca's a little bit nervous to introduce Hank to her boyfriend because she thinks that you know she's probably going to scare her boyfriend off. Right. But her boyfriend stood right up to right up to Hank. And let me ask you this: I mean, uh, we've always seen Becca be sort of the more adult person in right. this relationship between her father and her, and she's actually told him like, "Dad, you have to do this in order to fix your f up." Now, do you think she's past that point and she's moved on to a new f up with the boyfriend, or do you actually believe yes. that this guy's oh. good? Good one. Yes. Ew. Okay. She's now, moving on. She's now putting her energy into this new F up or not F up. Oh, he's an F. You know what? I think that that's a great point. I think that's a great after buzz prediction too. But a lot of times as women, we tend to date men who are just like our fathers or what we think that our fathers are. And I can see her making the same mistakes with the men that her mom made. So it's like she was dealing with him, the dad. The dad that was right. that was not a love, one hundred percent love relationship. It wasn't I hate my dad. It was just dealing with him. And now, yeah, now she's moved on to I'm dealing with this other guy. But she likes him, of course. I mean, loves him and everything. She's seen her dad like sleep with other women, cheat yeah. on her mother, crash car. Like he's done so many things that are irresponsible. So I can see her dating another rebel with the cop. You know, yeah, like, he's gonna cheat on her and she's gonna deal with it. And yeah, it's gonna be exactly we'll see that i think we'll i think that would be she's something. gonna wind up getting someone just like her dad who she kind of there's like a love hate relationship between her and her father she always forgives him no matter what mistake he makes right. well it's unconditional but so. i think that's a great point phil i think so too i can because totally, i made it i can totally see that <laughs> happening uh, <laughs> and uh before we kind of conclude this episode but let's talk about the kind of through line that i think will be and uh it, for the season? Yeah, for the season with him sort of writing this movie. Obviously, he, he, he doesn't ask Runkle any questions. He says, I have a job for you. No questions asked. Got to go to L.A. And then it's like, oh, wow, this is the job you came up with for mm -hmm. me. Um, so uh, what are your thoughts on this? On him working on this project with um, Rizzo? Rizzo? Well, what makes it good, what makes it so, so Megan good is that, um, you know, the Rizzo's character in this show, uh, <laughs> right back at you, <laughs> um, he is going to collaborate with, with Hank now for, for this project. Right. Um, like you said, no questions asked. It's just go time. And you knew as soon as, like, uh, Hank stepped away from her, you knew she'd be back in the show some way, somehow. And I guess that is... The Riz's character is with the Megan Good character, and, and it and it. and she opens up with saying, "Hi, nice to meet you." Which didn't, which didn't give anything away. Actually, anything she said didn't give anything away. But she goes, "Oh, excuse me," and she dropped a little bit of the drink right. on him, and she said the exact same quote he said when he spilled the the the, the, the pool. Wa yeah, the pool. Comment. Your 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 flood. I don't know what <laughs> you would say that better. <laughs> But, like, I love any time that there's a sexual tension element. Yeah. And I think that they're bringing that, they're bringing that into the storyline with um, Megan Good. So I think this is going to be juicy because one thing that she has mastered in every role that she has played is this, like, sex kitten. Yeah. And I know she tries to get away from those roles. No, she don't. But... She no. She has said she wants to play different characters, but girl, you hit it on the money. I mean, she is a sexy thing. Yeah, she, she gets, said that she's like complaining. She wants it. Yeah. Well, she, he yeah. said yeah. online. He said online. She has like the nip slips and everything. So I don't know if she's really. I mean, obviously, maybe it was a mistake, but I mean, she's she seems like she is embracing this yeah, role. She, she embraces it very well. Anytime you see her out, you know, she's the boobs are out. You know. I mean, she. So she's. You think she's. Well, she's she saying she's she typecast. Was, is that? I mean. Oh, well, yeah. absolutely. She's, she's, she's typecast. She's typecast yeah. But she would like to do other stuff. Yeah, well. But we always see her play these roles, and she hits it on the money. Whenever we see other girls try to play these roles um, that Megan Good plays, we're always like, "Oh, Megan must have been busy, like for you to have done it." You <laughs> right. know. And that so, does come up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we see Megan in a role like this, we're like, "This is is you, girl. Just embrace it because yeah. you do it better than anybody." Yeah. But by the way, I will say, you know, uh, being a, being a quote whore whatever i don't know Wait, whatever you're, you're a, who, she's not a what? whore she's like a sex kitten it's like okay being a sex kitten on californication versus like other roles that's to be a sex kitten on californication is like you know that's 
That's worthy. <laughs> you want to be that. It is like a role. Yeah, this actually. It's a huge role for her. It's like, a huge role, and it's a, it's a very popular show. Yeah. It does well in the ratings, and so. Because it, seen... it gives her a little credibility. It's not just, like, if she did this exact role, but she did it on, yeah, you like, know. I, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to say. The fact that it's. The fact that <laughs> you know it's, what I'm going to say? Or what you're well, say? I, well, I know. Take I, it. Okay, I know where you were going with this. <laughs> To be on like the game and some of those other shows where she's kind of playing the same thing over right. and over, like this show has a uh, has a bigger audience. Right. So to play, to be a part of something that most minority actresses won't be able to get on, and to play for a show like this, right, it helps her. It's AKA big. meaning Gabrielle Union would have probably taken this role too, right? That type of character, that type of you know, well, it, the, the, she can't the, play the, sexy. Gab well. Gabrielle's oh, a different lane. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think Gabrielle could play that? If I mean, it's she like it's a character though. It's a role. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I feel like I would love for her. To I feel try like that. they both um, have created really big names in Hollywood for yeah. black women, um, and they get a lot of work. But I think that they have two different essence. Yeah. Gabrielle plays usually like strong, respectful, um, you know, strong black woman, and Megan Good always gets the like um, sexual sex. Like she's this like seductor. Is that a word? Seductor? Se seductor. Oh, yeah, I, know. I don't know if that's a word. She's like a siren what if, role. What does Phil say? When we say it here, it, it becomes a hey, word. Man. So there you go. She plays the siren role. The two of them are actually going to be in a new movie um, this March called I Think Like a Man that's based off the Steve Harvey book. They've oh. been in a movie yeah. together before. Well, movie speaking of yeah. Let me cut you off because uh, it sounds like we're pretty much getting into the news. So real quick, before oh. we get into our news, <laughs> why don't we uh, take a quick commercial break? We'll Let's do it. Bam's got some awesome news for us. I love Bam with his news. I'm excited to hear Social all about media. it. So we'll be back <laughs> right after this. Right. After Buzz TV. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And, like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag co-workers about it at the water cooler. Then, I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Oh, hey. Welcome back, guys. Before we get into the news and gossip, I do just want to say thank you for rejoining us for another season. We did season four uh, with you guys. Thank you for listening. If you're a new fan, welcome, welcome. We appreciate you. And uh, why not tell a friend, you're, you, whether you're a returning player, a new player, <laughs> spread the word. We love that. And speaking of word, what is word. the word with the news and gossip? Oh, After listen to this. Hello. Bam. Well, all right. Uh, so, <laughs> so Californication debuted. Um, it dropped in the ratings. It uh, it oh, did. No. It had a million. It had one point uh, one point zero three million viewers, and it was beat up by the new show for Don Sims, uh, Don Cheeto on Showtime called uh, House Oh House of Lies. of Lies. I wonder how so, that yeah. is. So it, it debuted number one. They've been one. saying that's yeah. good. People, I think, even tweeted after Buzz saying you should jump on. Uh, yeah. Right, oh. Phil. I think I don't Phil. know. That yes, might be. I believe. But yeah, it beat out. It beat out. Um, it beat out Shameless and California Cation. Oh, what a mistake. Yeah. But I mean, it's the first show everyone always tunes <laughs> we in. We should have so seen it though, so, yeah. we should, so we could have been able to compare. compare. Yeah. That's true. I'm We're just going to watch every I'm show. Or just, I'm just like quitting life and just watching TV. So all. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the ratings. Hey, no bills yeah. except my cable. Yeah. Hopefully the ratings doesn't drop too much <laughs> because. Um, I know it's pretty expensive. David Duchovny, he gets two twenty-five an episode. So I hope wow. They don't. But the, the the good news of all of that though is that these are all sh Showtime shows. So I think you know what I mean. I think it'll start to build upon each other. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I love what Showtime is yeah. doing. 
But I don't understand how the show can be that expensive. It's not like they have special effects like cars blowing up and mm -hmm. is it maybe like it's the actors that cost the most? It's probably the actors and he, well he's getting the most obviously twenty twenty five thousand dollars dollars an episode but with a million viewers weekly I mean that's good for a network you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's pretty good. And he but, has negotiating power because he can't be replaced. Absolutely. If if he's if he's gone the show If gone. he's gone we're gone yeah. But in other news uh, RZA is um, he was promoting his new he was promoting a character that he plays Apocalypse Samurai on the show and he was recently Apocalypse on show Apocalypse Samurai <laughs> that's so crazy to me okay. uh, yeah well he was uh he was on Chelsea lately and Craig uh Craig Ferguson and he was talking about the difference with him acting now and now he's chose not to smoke weed or to drink versus when he was doing music weed and alcohol kind of gives him his creative juices mm -hmm. but to be taken more serious as an actor he's decided now no more drinking and uh, no more smoking Oh wow! So uh, congratulations to him, and then so also acting is making him be more healthy. Yeah, and <laughs> he has his new directing. He has a directing uh, debut um, October of 2012 called The Man with Iron Fist. So he has a film that he's directing, and I actually ran into Supreme of the Wu Tang Clan, uh, Wu Tang Clan, and he said that um, they'll be touring this year. So the whole Wu Tang. So will he's be... covered acting. He's yeah. got his directing. Going he's definitely on. been broadening his thing yeah. for a little bit, um, and that's and absolutely good because I mean, when you're like almost 40 and you're you rapping, yeah, yeah. You got He has been. He's yeah. done like uh, scores on yeah. movies or soundtracks at least. Um, I can't think of the ones right away. So that's good. He does want to be let, taking more. Go let ahead. me ask you: Is he parroting himself then on the show with uh, the comment he made of like, you know, I've conquered music now. I want to get into uh, movies. Yeah, pretty much. It's just a good so. move. He's got to make yeah. bigger checks and, and sustain yeah. himself in this thing. Um, but if he doesn't want, if he wants to get taken more seriously, the weed and all that. Okay, nice. You know, cute, whatever. But uh, <laughs> my thing is, um, the speech thing has always been an issue. So maybe, maybe that could be something to get together because yeah. he's got he quite, a, <laughs> he's got quite a slur. I mean, it's okay, and it was probably really okay. You know, the the Wu Tang days, of course. You know, Staten <laughs> Island, let's go. You know, but it's not good to just watch just right. yeah. when you see him talk to Chelsea. Did she make fun of it? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she might have like laughed about that. But then speech is nothing to laugh. About about so okay go back I'm gonna to you, really Graham. focus in on his role though <laughs> just because I take it more seriously when any artists that are singers or rappers try to cross over into the acting world I'm gonna be 10 times more judgmental because I feel like they don't always take it as seriously yeah. uh, take the craft and so I, I I don't know anybody yet has mastered it as well as most deaf I think that's someone who's done a great transition I like the I can name Italian several, job yeah I can name several that rappers that have crossed over into acting yeah. and done a great job name some Will Smith Okay, he doesn't count. Why not? He's, he's a like a god. Oh. He's like an icon. Queen, Lati Queen Latifah. <laughs> Queen Latifah. Okay, good. she's good. She's really good. Queen Latifah has. Yeah, that's true. You're just. Uh, that's I think two. she's. I think she's just that's saying two. it's a but challenging no, but yeah, thing. But I, it's not a given. That wasn't several. That I was get, a couple. Like, I mean, like, I can, Red I can go there, but we don't have enough time. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying because there's a lot really of rappers. Hard. They step in and, and they just think of, they can. Yeah. In other words, in other words, he's doing too. he's doing this project, but Red Man and Method Man did How High. Okay, yeah, so it's on, like it's it's a difference. It's a it's a challenge. Absolutely. And I know I'm going to be watching him like a hawk. But I wonder when he goes on tour with Wu Tang, will he go back to smoking? Oh, I know. Right? I mean, but but at the end of the day, Jesus. I hate to say this, but this was probably just a PR little thing. Not that he's not smoking weed or not, <laughs> but it's just like you know, it was packaged up. The PR people were like, yeah. okay, True. Chelsea's people. Yeah. They came in, they did the pre-interview. I mean, I'm just saying the way that Let's I feel like it is. Smoking. Yeah, yeah, it becomes the underlining thing. That's yeah. So and then and then one more uh, one more thing. Megan, speaking of Megan Good, Megan Good has a couple movies that she's doing. She has Think Like a Man. That's with the ensemble black cast. And I read of, that book. I'm yeah. excited to see the film. Oh god, you read Act the book? like a lady, think like a man. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm a Steve Harvey fan. <laughs> um, no comment. Well, it's an all-star cast. Sorry, it's an all-star cast. It You're has not gonna Gabri go see it. You're gonna support it. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go see it. I mean, it has all the the actors that I want to see. It has Gabriel Union, it has Kevin Hart, it has Michael Ealy, uh, of course, Megan Good. So it's an all-star cast. So of course, oh, and Taraji Henson, oh, who that's I right. absolutely love. So I'm definitely gonna go see it. And then she's also filming Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil right now. That should be coming out at the end of the year. So she's hitting that like sci-fi like. Horror, yeah. um, too, I do like when they before. do everything. When they do, they she do did that. But, and this is and this is a good move. So okay, so she's doing the black movie, so that's cool. But now she's doing Californication, and now she has another movie. So it's good to if you want to be taking, yeah, yeah. And that's you what be we're taking doing. as a serious actress, then you need to. Do you know who I like like that? This is a little off topic, but actress wise, who I think does a lot of different types of films. This is actually one of the entertainers that I would like to meet uh, and slash would not be uh, would be a tad nervous to interview. Uh, Rosario Dawson is sort oh. of that. Hers. I mean, for me, when you go from I the kids her. to rent to she's your friend. What I said, I met. Her. Oh, you met her. Um, to, to, like you know, she, like she, you time. know, she, she spoke. She spoke at the Obama um, in, inauguration back when, and she did a voto Latino, which.
which was like empowering uh, Latinos to vote. I mean, I love people that just hit every, uh, the, 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 the stoner is movies Rosario too. Rosario has never been typecasted. She has, from the beginning, been hustled. She's yeah. always been able to transition into any film, yeah. any role. So I'm just saying, like, these people, Megan, Megan Good is talking about, I want to transition. Uh, Riz is saying, I want to be taken seriously. Yeah. I'm saying there are certain entertainers. You take a you you go from the book. You look at their book and see how they did it because she she really That's is. That's a great example. Yeah. For she is follow. the one, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I even agree. within our own careers, we try to we try to like you know. We're like we're gonna do, do this all, after best show so yeah. we can branch out. Or, you <laughs> know, <laughs> something. But that was a good report. Well, thanks. So you been buzz. Your after buzz TV predictions. Why does it have to be so scary? <laughs> I feel like it's like, <laughs> and it's like the end of the night. Haunted, it's been like I know. 18 I have to shows. Walk to my car and, by myself. <laughs> um, okay, uh, predictions. Anything you guys foresee in your crystal ball? I just think um, just a lot with the uh, behind the back uh, of Riza not knowing his character, which you said the whole name a second ago. Um, him not knowing Apocalypse what's going. Samurai. Yeah, the samurai. That's a joke. Him not <laughs> knowing what's going on with you know his girl and, and Hank. There's, there'll be a lot of that. It'll They're be a lot up of behind his back. So many close calls. Um, and, and wait, I, wait, Ronnie, I'm, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that because in the preview clip, we get the uh, he's <laughs> he's by the pool, and uh, Riza is like, What are you doing with my girl? So, so there's no behind the back, it is behind the back. no, but that's just a comment, though. That's you think just, you, he, that's like that's like instinct. we're all, yeah, that's just oh, instinct. wait, wait, how did he say it though? That's that's the question, all right, so I. Are you saying they're just teasing me and they're just fooling me and yes, leading possibly. me down a bad maybe, path? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Like I'm he spicy. Just has like a little bit of insight. But we could do a fear factor bet. Like if one of us is wrong, like one of us has to eat an insect or something, <laughs> Phil, for the <laughs> for the fear good factor. With those. Sorry, I'm just segueing right, I'll everything. Do that. I'll do that. <laughs> Come on, Phil. Let's get it. Let's get in the fear factor. I think thing. he's not gonna find out. He's gonna catch <laughs> Megan and Hank together. What's Megan? What's Megan's good name? Um, on the. Californication Joe. Do we know her name on there? I don't think, right? That's the her thing name. we don't they know. They haven't told us yet. Okay. Oh. Shody. Um, Shody. Yeah. <laughs> That's Shody. her name right now. <laughs> well, um, I think that, of course, her and Hank um, are going to sleep together because he gets the booty from everybody. Yeah. And um, I think that we're going to see some, like, of course, love, friction, and tension uh, between him and Karen. But I think that she's going to cheat on her husband with Hank. Like she cheats on every man. Oh, with really? Yeah. Oh, how cool. Because I, I think, mean, not cool for real life, but in for the show. Yeah, but no. I they, love to watch these shows. There's like, fantasy. This, they have this tension where they they well. still want each other. You know, she went and married someone who's just like Hank. You but know, better, she loves but her. Awesome. She loves her some asshole. And um, I think that we're gonna see with um. Becca, you know, like how Phil predicted. I thought that was a great After Buzz prediction that she got herself a jerk too. I have one prediction. My prediction is they will do better in the ratings next week. Yeah. I agree. I hope that's fingers crossed. All why, right. do you, why do you predict that? Why do you think that? Well, because with new shows, you always go and watch the first show. Like when you think about uh, Two Men and a Half with Ashton Kutcher, it was like almost 25 million people. And then the oh. second week, it like went down to 17. You're like, eh, so, it wasn't worth it. Oh, it was, like, it was like a stunt almost because yeah. you wanted to see Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, you want to see um, what happens. So you see what happens the first week. And then, of course, people just go into. They forget about it. So, like Californication has the run. It's been around for a long time. People will end up back there, but we're they're gonna go see. It, they're gonna see House good. of Lies. They're gonna go see. Yeah. Is it Kristen Bell in that? You know, they're gonna go. go it's look. with Don Cheeto. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a I'm a great fan of Don. Oh, Don's, I did but... want to see that. Okay. Yeah. I have Comcast. I have On Demand. I'm good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, you're gonna have to come over and watch it with me. Boom. <laughs> Another and I also, think, I, I also think in terms of the rating, that's, that's the problem. They they don't account for um, what's called um, downloads or DVR uh, plus seven or something like that. Live plus seven. It's uh it's the live viewership plus seven days after. Yeah, the oh. ratings doesn't it take what was it with the DVR? Doesn't it take like a week or two weeks before those count? It, 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 well, right now, it doesn't take into consideration DVR fans like ourselves. Like, I didn't watch it live, you know what I mean? But I, record I, I, I recorded it, and I watched it after the fact, so, it, you know, but that's not taken into account, and people are now saying it I should. should. Yeah. I used to be a Nielsen's member. Oh. Yeah. I should definitely know this, but do the networks, do they only account everything, everything, every, these days in the technology world, do they only account everything on ratings when they make the decisions to drop shows? Because yeah. it's just so, it just sucks because there's so much more Are than just so the ratings. Are you so about how to make it yeah. in America? Not even going on that, but <laughs> I like. Think it's, I think it's, I think it's the ratings it's, and then also the costs. 
oh, the ratings. Are but the also, but it's like, gosh, I, there's so yeah. many things that are like buzzworthy and viral. Like, I'm gonna even talk about Megan Good. I don't think Megan Good is as big. Like, she's big. I always felt like she was a bigger, like, just as far as people talking about her and the she's on, you know, the the bossup.com world star. She's like everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. So any any film she does, it's like, is she that popular? Uh, well, online, Wait, she's I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some hatred out into the world um, and, and <laughs> probably take a lot of heat for this, but you know, TBS. Conan, you left NBC and you said you would have a fan base, right? You and your fans. And then you come to CBS, and where's the fans? You have the you have the same ratings, if not worse. They're worse. And you know what? Why? Because you are critically acclaimed, and that that's the thing. Like Californication, it's mm -hmm. critically acclaimed, and you know that's why I, that's it actually works in the favor of Californication because it's so great that that's what right. saves the show too. And and in the case of Californication, it has a lo loyal audience, like I guess with it does. Conan. Where you know, uh, here's a Hank shirt. People will go out and buy. It. I mean, Oprah is fighting for two hundred thousand viewers on her damn network. What? That's what she's fighting for. That's oh. what she's fighting oh. for. Yes, yeah, we is, get that here. Talking. You she know, for a show. That, she needs to put After Buzz on there because <laughs> we would help her out. <laughs> yeah, that's Oprah. crazy. She's dropping the ball. Oprah, Just kidding. Call us. Well, you know, yeah. Four two four two five six one seven two nine. We'll talk to we'll Gail. Do, even we'll, we'll even we'll, we'll even accept <laughs> Gail. We'll do a show for you. Put After Buzz on the Oprah. Winfrey I love Network. that passionate rant, though. I think that I kinda... can't wait to take heat for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, tweet it. him uh, <laughs> at P D S V I T E K. I guess S V I T K. Yes. <laughs> but but more importantly, tweet After Buzz. Tweet After Buzz yeah. and tweet right. these guys. Uh, let's go. Let's go uh, around the table, starting with you, Spicy. I will respond to your tweets if you play with my Twitter. My tweet, my, I was going to say. My, <laughs> oh my, Twitter, my God, thank God you didn't say twat. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. I know, right? You said it for me. Um, my Twitter is spicy, S-P-I-C-Y underscore M-A-R-I, spicy uh, underscore Mari. Tweet at me. D don't play with my Twitter at, at all, <laughs> it's, but it is at Ronnie Junior Media. Moving on. <laughs> I don't, I have a Twitter. Mine is at Bam, um, at Bam Erickson, B-A-M-M-E-R-I-C-S-C-N, but it's better to follow me on Facebook. And follow yeah, all these great shows on After Buzz. We, uh, of course, have the Facebook page. We are on Ustream, YouTube. Go to the YouTube thing and the iTunes. And also, let me tell you, follow all the other shows. We Today, me and Spicy Mari got a chance to see some of the other great hosts that we never even met. I mean, Courtney, I knew, of course. But, I mean, there are so many great shows right. and so many great hosts. So this is a big representation on After Buzz. So show it some support, okay? And it, Yes, it. thank you, thank you. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Californication! <laughs> From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.